Andrew Bakari, and welcome to Mercy Church. We're glad that you came to worship with us. If this is your first time visiting with us, please stop by the welcome desk in the foyer for your free gift and to learn more about Mercy Church. Here's what's happening at Mercy. Father's Day is just around the corner. Don't forget to invite someone to come with you as we honor all of our fathers in the morning service on June 16th. South Carolina Church of God Camp Meeting is June 9th through the 14th in Malden, South Carolina. Speakers include General Overseer Dr. Tim Hill, Dr. Raymond Culpepper, Pastor Eric Petrie, and Evangelist Rhonda Holland, and music by the Brooklyn Tabernacle Singer. Don't miss this exciting week of services. For more information, contact the church office. 2019 South Carolina Youth Camp Identity is right around the corner. If you haven't already signed up for student, the time is now. Slots are filling up quickly. For more information or to pick up an application, come by the sign-in desk at the Family Life Center. Also, if you would like to go as a leader, go by the church office for more information. You don't want to miss Youth Camp this year. Are you looking for a place to connect? We have a small group just for you. There's meeting times on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, and during the week, there's always somewhere and something to do. More information about our small groups can be found at the hospitality desk in the foyer or in the call your church office. Attention women, your $50 deposit for the Renew 19 Women's Retreat in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee is due now. You don't want to miss this opportunity to connect, worship, relax, and fellowship with other ladies during this incredible weekend. Reserve your spot now. Space is limited, filling up quickly. More information is available at the hospitality desk or by contacting Sister Angie Murphy in the church office. Thank you again for joining us at Mercy Church. If you need anything, please see one of our hospitality desks in the foyer for assistance. Don't forget to follow us on social media or check out our website for more activities and weekly updates. If I can get you to stand with me. We are so glad that you came today and chose Mercy Church to worship with us as we worship our Lord. And I'm telling you, as always, I feel so strongly in my spirit this morning. God's about to do something awesome. So cross the aisles, shake hands. If you see a visitor that you don't recognize, make them welcome here at Mercy Church this morning.
So this morning we're going to talk about health and healing. How many of you need a healing touch? Amen. Come on, let me see your hand. Yeah. Come on, shame the devil. Yeah. Listen, healing just, doesn't just mean for your body. Come on, that's true. If you got problems in your finances, guess what? Mm -hmm. You need to be healed. That's right. On your job and your family. Come on. I'm talking about total restoration. Yeah. Brother Larry, this is for you, brother. I felt so prompted yesterday when we were talking. Need to claim that healing. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to claim it today. Y'all ready? Yeah. Repeat this after me and say it like you mean it. I mean, come on, we're talking to it. Come on. I'm talking about, we're talking about God Himself now. Yeah. Make this thing personal. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, attend I attend to your word. I incline my ears. To your sayings, your sayings. I, will not let them I will not let them depart from my eyes. From my eyes. I, keep them I keep them in the midst of my heart. The of my heart. For, they For they are life. Come on, they are life, they are life. To, all of my flesh. to all of my flesh. Jesus bore my sins, bore my sins. In, his body. in his body on the tree. On the tree. Therefore, Therefore, I am dead to sin. And alive, and alive unto God. And by His stripes, by his stripes. come on, by his stripes, by his stripes, I am made healed, I am made healed. And, I am made and I am made whole. I present my body to God, I present my body to God. For, it is for it is the temple, the temple of, the God. of the living God. God dwells in me, and his, his life, it permeates my spirit. And my, and my soul and my body, and my body so, that so that I am filled with the fullness, with the fullness of, God of God every day, every day of, my of my life. Come on, give God praise. Well, if you believe that, I want you to pray out loud with me. Father, we thank you right now for your word. Father, we proclaim and we lay claim to, Father, the healing Father, of our bodies, of our spirits, of our minds. Father, whether it be on our job, our finances, our family. Father, it doesn't matter what we're going through. But we know that your word is all powerful, God. And Father, it can bring us from any situation, Father, into success, God, in every part of our life. And so today, right now, Father, in this time, we give it to you and we honor you and we praise you and magnify you, God, in everything that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you that you are a God of your promises. Yes, give him a hand clap this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. You are in this place, God. God, we call forth every promise that you've ever given us, God. We know that you are faithful and just to bring them to pass, Lord. God, we know that we are coming into this harvest season. Lord, prepare our hearts. God, make us ready, God, for what you have for us. Here we stand on this foundation, hope as an anchor, faith is our flag. The cross is our courage, your word is our way. Through wars and rumors of wars, still you are sovereign, still you are Lord above the confusion. Your covenant stands.
place. Amen. It has already been defeated. Jesus, you are exalted. God, you have won the victory in the name of Jesus.
between the battles won For you have never failed me never failed us how many know he's faithful to us today he is a faithful God 
And we're praying that he's going to do it again, just like the things we've read about, just like the things we've heard about. We know that our God is a great God, and there's nothing too hard for him to do. How many of you know he can do it again? He never changes. Praise God. I'm so thankful today for his faithfulness, for all the promises of God, everything that he's ever promised us. He's not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should lie. But God's word is true forever and forever and forever. And that's how we build our faith, through the word of the living God. Hallelujah. Can you just give Jesus another great big hand? <laughs> Amen. You may be seated this morning, and if our ushers will prepare themselves, this morning we want to receive our tithe and also our offering this morning, this morning, I, I want to just bring to your attention, I want to take up a, a special offering this morning uh, for Brother Jim, Sister Lily. Um, they're going to Ukraine next Monday, not tomorrow, but next Monday on the 9th or the 10th. They're leaving on the 10th. Also, Brother Don's going with them. And, uh, of course, uh, Jim and Lily, they're going to be gone for nine weeks. I always hate to see them go, but I know that they're, they're walking uh, in the will of God when they go, and uh, they're going to be ministering. We want to take them up a special offering this morning to help them with their expenses and to help them when they get over there, the things that they do. Uh, they don't hold on to the money. When they go over there, man, they, they're, they're helping others. They're giving out to others. They're, they're pouring themselves out, and they're using the finances wisely. And uh, so we want to also uh, pray for them. We'll probably do that next Sunday. They're going to be here next Sunday, and so we want to pray for them before they, before they leave out next Sunday. But we want to go ahead and take up the offering this Sunday because they won't have time to, to get the, the monies and to turn it around. So we want to go ahead and do that today. So I want you to give to them. I want you to bless uh, their ministry today. Everything that you give in the loose offering uh, will we'll go toward that. And if you put it in the envelope, just uh, designate it uh, to that ministry to your Ukraine. And so uh, that's, that's what will happen. And we'll bless them. Amen. I know that you will because this church is, is a given church. And this church always blesses and I thank you so much for that so I want to pray right now over the tithe and over everything that you give today let's pray father God we love you and we thank you for all your blessings of life thank you God that you are faithful thank you God that you minister mightily in this place God praying father God that the spirit of God would move in such a powerful way today God that you bless your people Lord as uh, as they receive the word today God I pray God that you would bless them God and anoint them God and let them hear the word and let them respond to the word I pray God I pray father today that you'd bless the offering that is given to Jim and Lily their ministry God to Ukraine I pray God that you would bless the tithe God and bless your people as they give today in Jesus name we pray amen
Praise God. Can you just put your hands together for the goodness of the Lord, for the goodness of God. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, God, for your mercy. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness. We thank you, God, that you attended to our prayers, God, to our hearts and everything that affects us. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're good. We thank you, God, that you're good. Hallelujah. We're thankful, Lord, today, God, and we magnify your wonderful holy name, God. There is no one like you, God. There is not another God like you, Lord. No one like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name. Praise the name of the Lord God. Hallelujah. We praise you today, Jesus. We give you glory and we give you honor. We magnify your wonderful name, God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody tell him, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness. Surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank God he's watching after me. Thank God he's running after me. Thank God he's going before me. Thank God he's coming behind me. Thank God he's on the side of me. Thank God he's with me. He'll never leave me. Nowhere he forsake me, but he'll go with me all the way to the end of the world. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. after you I'm so thankful that the Spirit of God will come after us I'm so thankful that the Spirit of God knows exactly what we need he knows how to nudge us he knows how to move upon us he knows how to pull us 
the Spirit of God. And I'm so thankful today for the Spirit of God. I'm so thankful for the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. I'm so thankful that God, though He went back to heaven, He said in John 14, 18, He said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, but I will comfort you. He said, it's expedient that I go away. For if I don't go away, Holy Spirit cannot come. But we know He left. And we know that the Spirit of God came. And the Spirit of God is with us today. And He nudges us. He moves us to the place that we need to go. Praise God. Aren't you thankful for that today? Aren't you thankful for the Spirit of God today? Aren't you thankful that God knows what we have need of even before we ask? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I'm ready to preach. Man, I ain't preached in four weeks. I thought, man, they're going to want to dock my pay. But I'm thankful for the ones that we've had. I'm thankful for my, my friend, Philip Napier, that came and preached past appreciation. I'm thankful so much for Rhonda when she preached on Mother's Day and Brother Scotty Hager when he came. And then last week, the Spirit of God just moved. And uh, so, but it's been four weeks. And, but, uh, the Lord has given me a message today, and, and as I was studying and looking and, and preparing and knowing that, uh, that today is what we, what we call Ascension Sunday, and uh, I, I just want to read out of the book of Acts, chapter 1, and this story is when Jesus was about to leave to go back to heaven, and just want to read this to you, and then I just want to preach on some stuff today, just I want us to look at this. In Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 4 through about verse 11, the Bible says, And being assembled together with them, this was Jesus being assembled together, and uh, if, you, if you've studied Scripture out, you'll know that there were 500 Galileans there on the mountain with him. And so uh, it says, Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He said, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? How many of you know they had something else on their mind? They, they really didn't know what was about to take place. And, and sometimes we don't either. You know, I wish I had it figured out, but I promise you I don't. But if we will listen to the master, he'll give us direction. Amen. And so this is what takes place. He said, it is not for you to know the time nor the season which the Father has put in his own authority. He said in verse 8, but you shall receive Power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and the end of the earth. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, how I many you know they were hearing Jesus and they were watching Jesus? Wouldn't that have been great? I mean, to be a part of a congregation of 500 and you're standing there and you got your eyes on Jesus and your ears open to the words that he has spoken. The Bible said, And while they watched, he was taken up. Now, I mean his feet left the ground. He ascended into the heaven. The Bible said, And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. How many of you know who that was? Two white angels, I mean, two angels dressed in white. Two angels dressed in white apparel. They were standing there on either side, and they, who said to the men of Galilee, Why do you stand here gazing up into the heavens? Look here, let me give you a picture. Here they are. Eyes open, mouth was too. 
How many of you know that? I mean, if you'd have been standing there and Jesus had been talking and all of a sudden he, he your eyes would have went up and your mouth would have went open. 500 of them, then all of a sudden two angels start talking to them. Why do you men of Galilee stand here gazing into the heavens? They said, this same Jesus. That makes for some good preaching. You can take that word same and just drag it. The same Jesus. Amen. The same one that was just standing right there. The same one that had opened up the blinded eyes. The same one that walked on the water. The same one that raised the dead. The same one that died himself. The same one that three days later he got up. The same one that's been walking through walls for 40 days and talking to us. The same one that just told you to go to Jerusalem and tarry and wait for the promise of the power of the Holy Ghost so that you can be a witness. The same Jesus you see go up into heaven. They said, well, so come in like manner as you saw him go into the heavens. Amen. I ought to make for some good preaching right there, hadn't it? Let's pray. Father, Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have confidence knowing that you went to heaven, knowing that you sent the promise of the Father, knowing that the angels uh, 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 spoke and, 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 and let us know you coming again. But not only did the angels let us know and confirm it, but you had told us the same thing, and we'll get into that. But, Lord, you told us you coming again also. Mm, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. And I pray, God, right now that you'd anoint me as your servant to preach your word. Let the word go forth. Don't let it come back. Let us receive this word, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I want to speak to you on this subject. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Amen. Jesus spoke to his disciples, and he spoke to the men of Galilee there, and he said, listen, don't go too far. Don't go too far, he said, but go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise, for the promise of the Father. The tendency of the disciples would have been scatter, just scatter, after Jesus left, but he gathered them together and gave them direction. How many of you know when you don't know what to do, you need to go and wait for, the, for direction from the Master? God has given us some promises now here here's the here's the scene here's here's what's taking place if you read down in paul's writings you'll find out that there were 500 galileans standing there on the mountain and jesus had gathered them out there because he was getting ready to leave and then jesus himself standing there jesus with his feet planted on that top of that mountain or wherever they were at on that mountain and they're standing there looking at him and he's speaking to them with his mouth. They're seeing him with their eyes. They're hearing him with their ears. And he said, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. That's what direction he gave them. Of course, they tried to throw him off a little bit. You're going to set up the kingdom? That ain't none of your business. He said, listen, wait, go to Jerusalem, wait for the promise, for you're going to be endued with power from on high so that you can be a witness for me a witness for me so 500 are standing there and 76 percent of them didn't obey only 24 percent you can do the math 120 out of 500 24 percent obeyed the master and they were standing there looking at him Watching him, knew who he was, listening, and only 24% obeyed. 76% said, I ain't got time for that. The Bible said, Blessed are they that have never seen, but still believe. Praise God. Let me ask you something. Do you believe? Do you still believe? Are you still believing in Jesus? Are you still, let me ask you this, are you still believing in the Holy Ghost? Are you still believing in the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. He said, you shall receive power. That word power means dunamis, and it's the same word as dynamite. 
You're going to have some dynamite. It JJ used to say. Dynamite. But can I tell you that the dynamite is not for this narcissistic world that we live in today? It ain't for just me, and it ain't just for you, but we get the power so that we can help somebody else. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. The power is going to help you. But the power you get need to help somebody. I've had people tell me, say, well, you ain't got to have the Holy Ghost to make it to heaven. That's right. But you need to have the Holy Ghost to help somebody else make it to heaven. Amen. Because the power of the Holy Ghost gives you power to be a witness. Before I ever got the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't have ever got me up on stage and give me one of these things right here. Ain't no way. Wouldn't have done it. I remember when we used to gather together before I ever got the Holy Ghost in the place and they want somebody to pray, I'd be hiding behind the wall like a mannequin. Don't call on me. No way. But then when I got the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, my mouth flew open and it makes you to have power to be a witness to, for Jesus Christ. Amen. Power of the Holy Ghost. We got some promises. Oh, I told you a while ago, God cannot lie. He can't lie. There's a few things God can't do. One of them is he can't lie. The Bible said he's not a man that he should lie. Nor is he the son of man that he should lie. God's word is the truth. Every promise, the Bible says, is yes and amen. Every promise in the book is mine. Mm. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All the blessings of his love divine. Every promise in the book is, it's mine. By his stripes, the book says, I'm healed. Until the day of redemption, the book says, I've been sealed. According to that same book, to prosper and be in health is right in line. Every promise in the book somebody say thank God is mine it's mine it's mine and it's yours every promise and God said go and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost because when the Holy Ghost comes on you you gonna have power to be a witness unto me everywhere you go. Praise God. Listen here. In South Aiken, oh, in Vaucluse, in Gloverville, in North Augusta, in Augusta, in Montmorency, in Columbia, up in North Carolina, out in California, over in Ukraine, over in Peru, amen, everywhere you go, all around the world, we got to have the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's a promise. Oh, he's a comforter. He's my helper. Oh, and Jesus was basically telling them, help's on the way. Help is on the way. He said, it's expedient for me that I leave because if I don't go, the Holy Ghost won't come. But Jesus went, and my, 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 when he went, those 120 went in the upper room. The Bible said they got in one mind, one accord. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind come down, lit upon them, blew in the room, lit upon them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. They were intoxicated off the Holy Ghost. They staggered out of the upper room. Peter preached one little simple message, and 3,000 
miles and got saved. He was a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. On that day, they had received the power. How many know that parents know better than children? Come on. Y'all know better than they do. Parents give children medicine when they, uh, uh, to make things better. But how many know that the children don't really want that medicine unless it tastes like tutti frutti? Jesus knew what the disciples needed. They needed to receive something to help them. You and I need the promise of the Father. You and I need the infilling, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He is our comforter and our helper. The Holy Ghost will help us. Mm. But the Holy Ghost is for us to be a witness because Jesus and tell people about Jesus everywhere we go. Let me ask you something. Are you a witness? Are you a witness? Will you help give out the invitation to the wedding that is being prepared in heaven today? There's four things I want to talk about today. The first one is preparation. Preparation. Now, how many know that Jesus, when he left, he told them, go to Jerusalem, tarry, wait for the promise. But before that, he told us in John 14, 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, but you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I go away and prepare. I'm going to prepare. He's in preparation. He's going to prepare a place for you. And then he said, I will come again. You know what them two guys in white apparel said? He's coming again. He's coming again. The angel said he's coming again. Jesus said, I'm coming again, and I'm going to receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. How many know where he went? He went to the heaven. He's sitting by the Father right now. How many know the way? Didn't he say, I am the? He's the way. Jesus is the way. So Jesus is in preparation. He is preparing a place for you and me. He has uh, given us instructions to wait for the promise, to receive the power, to go promote him. Oh, that's like a three-point message. Y'all didn't, didn't pick up on it. Let me say it again. Wait for the promise. Mm-hmm. And then he told us after that, he said, receive the Power, and then he said, and then go promote me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Somebody write that down. You can preach that somewhere. If Jesus is preparing for us, then I want to know, are we preparing for him? Because he's coming back. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Have we prepared to receive the promise? Have, have you prayed for the promise of the power that God wants you to have? Anybody ever prayed for the Holy Ghost? How many ever received the Holy Ghost? Amen. How many need to pray for the Holy Ghost and want to receive the Holy Ghost? You can. Can I tell you that the Bible said it's for you and for your children and for your children's children? We act like that was something like a long time ago. Mm, it's for today. It's for, matter of fact, he said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon flesh. And your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Wouldn't that be something? Your son come home and say, Thus saith the Lord. You'd be like, I'd pass straight out. Hold on a second. Let me, bam. Prophesy. That's what the Bible said. They're going to come home. They're going to prophesy. Mm, your old men going to dream dreams. Young men going to see visions. Jesus said, you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost after it come on you. The disciples waited for the promise. They were in preparation. They were in preparation stage. Have you prepared to receive the power of the Holy Ghost? Have you asked for the power? Jesus said, if we know how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more shall the Father give them that ask? That ask. Amen. Amen. He said, if you ask for a piece of bread, he's not going to give you a stone. If you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a snake. What? And you wouldn't do it either. And if you ask the Father, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Ghost is for you. Hallelujah. After the preparation, there come some invitations. An invitation. He's going to prepare... And the disciples went and prepared, and they received the Holy Ghost. And then what do they do then? Then they go out, and they're a witness. 
So they, they, they put out an invitation, an invitation to meet Jesus and to go to the place that he's preparing. What, what is he preparing? He's preparing a wedding. Listen, there is a wedding being prepared and the invitations are being sent out. Matter of fact, Matthew 22, 1 says, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by a parable and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son, and he sent out the servants and called who were invited to the wedding, and some of them were not willing to come. Listen, the invitations are being sent out right now. The invitations are going out for the wedding for the son. Let me ask you something. Will you RSVP? Have you RSVP'd? Have you let him know I'll be there? I, how many plan on going to the wedding? Anybody in the house plan on going to the wedding? I'm talking about the wedding, the marriage, supper of the lamb. Amen. Will you accept the invitation? Will you prepare yourself for the wedding? Will you put on your wedding garment? Let me say it like this. Will you say yes to the dress? I just soon watch some go-kart racing in that junk. But I plan on having my wedding garment. If I got to wear a dress, so be it. Oh, praise God. Because if I'm going to be the bride, you know, look, I don't care. Just let me be there. My wedding garment. But after you accept the invitation, will you help give out some invitations? Invitations. Now, we gathered around here the other day. Uh, about a month or so ago, well, about six, I guess six, seven weeks ago, and we passed out 2,000 invitations. We sure did to come to church. And, and uh, we've, we've had some to come directly from that. Amen. Now, is that the easiest thing in the world to do? No. Could you get in trouble? Maybe. But, but you know, scared ain't never got nothing done. And, and, and you ain't never going to get nobody to the Lord if you're too scared to tell them about Jesus. And so my thing is, is we got to hand out the invitation. We got to give them an invitation to come receive Jesus. Amen. So, oh, praise God, I received my invitation, and I'm prepared to go but at the same time I need to help somebody else make it I need to oh give out an invitation so after you receive the power of the Holy Ghost you will have power to be a witness oh for the bridegroom the Bible said in Luke 14 16 says then he said to him a certain man gave out a great supper and invited many and sent his servant at supper time uh, and said to those who were invited come for all things are now ready but they all with one accord begin to start making excuses. Have you ever talked to anybody about Jesus and they just give you a whole bunch of excuses? One excuse after the other. And Luke 14, 21 says, So the servant came and reported these things to his master, and the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes and the city and bring in the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Oh, praise God. How many know that he's going to prepare a place, and there's plenty of room? Room. Then the master said to the servants, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now I've had people tell me, Well, it don't matter about the number. It, God wants his house to be full. He wants us to produce a harvest. Amen. And so as people of God, we need to go reach people. Amen. That's, that's what he, he is telling us we need the power for so that we can go be a witness for him. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Will you accept the invitation to the wedding? Listen, Jesus is in preparation for the wedding. We have received the invitation to the wedding, but I want to know, will you have the determination to make it to the wedding? I've got some determination today. Now, the devil will try to trip you up. He'll try to get you to fall away. The Bible even says in the last days, 
they will fall away. I ain't planning on falling away. I've got determination. Listen, Matthew 25, 1 said, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil in them. You know what the oil represents? Spirit of God. Mm. They went, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, all slumbered and slept, and at midnight a cry was heard. There was a midnight cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answer said, No, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, though other virgins came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, As Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. Listen, the Bible tells us that to be ready in such an hour as you think not. We need to be ready. We need to be determined. I, I, I'm determined that I'm going to make it to the wedding. Listen, all of those ten were virgins. They were all virgins, but all of them wasn't wise. Five, the five that were wise, they prepared. They had oil in their vessels. They were able to see the path to make it to the bridegroom. The word is our light. It will show clearly the path to the bridegroom. But the five foolish virgins had no oil. They could not see the path. They were left behind Mm, let me tell you, let me just make this statement. You can't run on empty. Anybody ever ran out of gas? Anybody ever been left on the side of the road? Mm -hmm. You can't run on empty. And the five foolish, they were trying to run on empty. But the five wise, they were full. They had their vessels full. They were able to make it to the bridegroom, and they were determined to make it. Amen. The oil represents the Spirit of God. I need to be full of the Spirit. You see, when the world and the enemy causes darkness, I can still see Jesus because I've got the Spirit of God in my vessel. Amen. The word here says, Watch. Watch. In other words, be ready. Mm, these are Jesus' words. And the thing about it is, is I'm determined. Are you determined? Are you determined? Amen. Jesus is in preparation. What's he in preparation for? The last thing I want to talk to you about today, celebration. Praise God, there's going to be a celebration. How many know that there's coming a day? There's going to be a, there's going to be a, celebration let me read a little bit to you revelation 19 4 says in the 24 elders and the four living creature fell down and worshiped god who sat at the throne saying amen hallelujah hallelujah i sound like benny don't it instead of kenny then a voice came from the throne saying praise our god all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad, come on now, and rejoice, oh, and give him glory. For the marriage supper of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm telling you, there's a celebration coming. 
there's a celebration coming, and we don't even understand all about it because the Bible said, I have not seen, no ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for his people. Amen. How many still believe in heaven? Come on now. How many still believe there's a heaven? How many still believe that we can go to heaven? How many believe that Jesus is preparing right now a place for us to go? Hallelujah. Amen. It's our job to give out the invitations. Amen. It's our job to be have determination to make it to the celebration. Amen. How many know that the Bible said there'd be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tear, no more death? But I'm telling you, it's not just going to be no more, but it's Bible is telling us explicitly that there's going to be life forevermore. I'm going to have life and that more abundantly. I'm going to have life forevermore. Praise God. I'm going to have a brand new body and a brand new life. Hallelujah. I'm not going to get old. I'm not going to have no arthritis. Praise God. I'm not going to have to wear no glasses. Oh, praise God. There's going to be a throne in heaven. Oh, God's going to sit on it. There's a crystal river. There's streets of gold, gates of pearl. Oh, oh, praise be unto God. But there's going to be Jesus right in the middle of it, the Lamb of God who loved me enough and gave himself for me, saved my soul, wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life, gave me a reason to rejoice. I'm going to a celebration. Hallelujah. Praise God. There ain't going to be no more darkness there because the light from that place will come straight from God. We will rejoice with the angels, worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Mm. Can I tell you that it, it, it's in that place that every promise of God will be fulfilled. Mm. Every promise. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised first incorruptible and we shall be changed. We don't have to sorrow as others that have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus, mm. those that have done gone on before us and have passed away. Praise God. He's going to bring them first. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Oh, Jesus is going to come back and shout. Woo! With the voice of an archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive and remain shall be called up mm, that's the rapture right there we gonna be called up praise God listen just like Jesus feet come up off the ground hallelujah our feet gonna come up off called up raptured into heaven hallelujah we gonna come up praise be unto God with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air what a reunion day that's gonna be oh what a celebration day that's gonna be and thus we shall always be with the Lord therefore the Bible said comfort one another with these words Maranatha brother Maranatha sister the Lord is coming you see just like Sister Bradbury the other day, we 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 did her funeral the other day. It was a grand day. I, I mean, it was a it was a it was a celebration day of her home going. Just like the loved ones that we know that know Jesus that's gone before us, praise be unto God, Hallelujah! One day they're gonna get up, they're gonna get up, and then they're gonna hold up, and they're gonna wait on us, and then we're gonna be called up. Oh, there's a bunch of up going there, ain't it? And we're gonna meet them in the clouds with the Lord and then the Bible said we're going to be with them forevermore praise God it's going to be like this right here on resurrection morning when the last trumpet sounds and all that have died in Christ they begin to rise up from the ground then we that remain we that are still alive, every promise in the book, thank God, is mine. I'm going to meet them. If I'm still alive when that time comes, I'm going to meet them, praise God. 
Hallelujah. But if, if I go by way of the grave, that's all right. Those of you that's left, you can't get there before I get up. Hallelujah. But I'm going to come up, and then I'm going to hold up, and I'm going to wait for y'all to come up. Then we all going to go up, and we're going to be with him forever. Praise God. Jesus is in preparation. Hallelujah. And it's our job to give out some invitations. Hallelujah. It's our job to be have that determination to hand out the invitations so that we can all go to the celebration. Praise God. Won't you stand with me today? Praise God. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, for everything that you're doing. Oh, we thank you, God, that we're still holding on to the Word. We're still preaching the Word, God. We're still believing in the Word, God. We know that the Word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, God. Thank you, God, that the grass may fade and the flowers fade, but your Word will never go away, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the promise of the Father. Father, I pray, God, that you would help us all to receive the promise, the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey, the power of the Holy Ghost so that we can be a witness, so that we can give out some invitations to the celebration. Father, I'm asking you, God, today, Lord, that you'd make a difference in your people's life in this building today, God. Lord, if there's somebody in here today, God, that uh, they, they've not received the invitation today, God, I'm handing them out. I'm, I'm giving them an invitation, Lord. I pray, God, today, let them accept this invitation to come and know you, Lord, and Father, I pray, God, if there's been somebody in here that's been straddling the fence, I pray, God, today, Lord, let them have determination. I pray, God, give them that determination, God, Lord, that we can all make it to the celebration. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing. God, right now, I pray that your spirit move mightily. And I pray, God, that you touch the hearts and the lives of your people right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, today, I'm asking you, if you don't know Jesus, if nobody's ever told you about Jesus, today, I'm telling you about Jesus. I, I, I'm, I'm giving you an invitation. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? Oh, he's preparing a place for you. He's preparing a celebration, marriage supper of the Lamb, and you can be there. Oh, and praise be unto God, what a time we're going to have in that place that we call heaven. Will you come today? Listen, if you've never received the power of the Holy Ghost, or if it's been a while since you've moved in the Holy Ghost, I'm calling you today. Will you come? And will you just gather around this altar? Because, listen, we all need this gift, this gift, this promise called the Holy Ghost. Mm, that we might have power, that we might have that dynamite, that we might have that power to be a witness. And then also today I'm wanting to call the church. Will you come and will you gather around this place and tell God, God, I'm determined. I want to have determination to make it to the celebration. Will you step out from where you're at right now and will you just gather around this, this altar and let God know, I'm determined to make it. I'm determined to make it, and I'm determined to help others make it. God, I know it's not just about me, but there's a dying world out there, and I pray, God, show me my part. Show me my part. God, help me to be an influence. Help me, Lord, to be an influence everywhere I go, God and to help others make it into the kingdom. Come on, as they start to sing, let's talk and pray to the Lord today.
Chapter 
Praise God. How many know that he sent us a helper? He sent us a comforter. Help. He was basically telling them help is on the way. And I'm telling you today, listen, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, I ask you to pray this week and ask him. Jesus, you said this is for me because he did. And it's a gift. And I'm asking you, as the Bible says, how much more will he give them that ask? I'm asking you, God, let me receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Let out of my belly flow rivers of living water. God, I'm asking you, will you, will you give me the Holy Ghost? Will you give me the power? Will you give me the comforter? Will you let me have the helper to help me help somebody else? Listen, if one could reach one, if everyone could teach one, praise God. If we had the power, we could go out and win one. The power of the Holy Ghost. Go out, talk to them. Listen, you have the power on your job when you got a chance to speak to somebody and tell somebody about Jesus. It'll make a difference in their life. I promise you it will. Anybody ever talked to anybody on their job and you knew it made a difference? Has anybody ever talked to you while you were on your job? Somebody told you about Jesus and it made the difference. That's what the power of the Holy Ghost is for, so that we might be a witness. Don't you want to see people come to the Lord? That's what this church is all about. I don't want to just come here for me. I want to gather together after we bring somebody in here to help them it's our job to love God to love others to love Jesus to love one another and to serve others go out and get them he said go out and Jesus said go out and get them compel them to come in go get them what I'm finding out today is people's having a hard time their own self trying to get here but when we're filled with the Holy Ghost the power we'll want to come to church and it'll give us the power to reach somebody and bring them with us amen praise God hallelujah tonight we will gather together we will pray six o'clock in here amen I know that for the volunteers, we've got a luncheon. We're going to go back there, and we're going to eat, and we're going we're gonna to have a meeting. Just want to say to you, I love you. I love you. I love you. And I appreciate you. And I thank you for everything that you do here at this church, for being here and worshiping with us. Let me pray for you. Father, Lord, I love you, and I thank you for your people today. And I pray, God, that you bless every one of them. I pray, God, as they leave this place today, God, you keep your hand on them, make your face shine upon them, lift your countenance unto them, God. Speak peace to them, God. Bless them in a mighty way, God. Let the angels of the Lord go with them, God. Let your goodness and your mercy follow them, God. Lead every step they take, I pray, God. Oh, I pray, God, that you'd bless them in a mighty way, God. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you today as you go. Hug somebody. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them.